The Tawawa Woods is linked to a riparian forest that forms an unbroken wooden corridor along Massey's Creek. The woods received its name from the Tawawa Springs, so named by the Shawnee Indians who used the area for bathing until the late 1700s. The largest spring was called the Bath of Gold by the Shawnee because the water ran over gold-colored rocks. South of the main spring was another large spring arising from a gravel bank that the Shawnee called the Tears of Silver because it reportedly was located near a silver mine. Many changes have occurred throughout the years in the woods and on the bluffs overlooking Massey's Creek. Within the woods, portions remain relatively pristine while other areas have undergone extensive tree cutting and refuge dumping. European pioneers settled the area for agricultural purposes as part of the Virginia Military Survey of 1799, which offered land to soldiers who fought in the Revolutionary War. During this period, the land was heavily timbered and a sawmill was constructed along the main stream. In 1851, the land was sold to the Xenia Springs Company. The company constructed a hotel and cottages for a health resort and renamed the springs Xenia Springs. Remnants of the Xenia Springs pool, gazebo, water wheel, and pathways still exist today. The Cincinnati Conference of the Methodist Episcopal Church purchased the Xenia Springs Resort in 1855 to establish the Ohio African University. The school was renamed Wilberforce University in 1856. The university continued to cut down trees for lumber for campus buildings, fuel, and other purposes. And as a result, by 1870, the five springs were reduced to three. In the 1930s, the construction of a waste treatment plant and access road further eroded the natural beauty of the Tawawa Woods. W.E.B. Du Bois recognized the destructive nature of these practices, criticizing the university's lack of foresight. In a 1940s commencement speech, Du Bois recalled young teachers protesting the dumping of refuge in the ravine that cut through the forest and the beginning of the destruction of a marvelous beauty spot. The protest took the form of a performance of Shakespeare's A Midsummer Night's Dream in the ravine. As part of a growing commitment to the preservation of natural sites in Ohio, the Nature Conservancy commissioned a study in 1956 to identify the most significant areas in the state. The study identified approximately 30 choice sites, one of which was the Tawawa Woods. Due to the extensive damage caused by an F5 tornado on April 3, 1974, the Tawawa Woods offered a unique potential for studies of natural forest recovery and secession. The Tawawa Woods did reach landmark status in 1990 because it has a diversity of plants. When you um, have a natural disaster or you cut down a lot of trees, you actually increase the diversity of the plant species in the woods. So while this is only, the Tawawa Woods is only about 55 acres of natural landmark area, it's a little bit bigger than that. Um, it actually is one of the most diverse woodlots in the area. Unfortunately, post-tornado cleanup and construction of the National Afro-American Museum and Cultural Center further impacted the landscape outside the natural landmark designation. The ravine was filled to support the building of the museum in 1988. We have a new ecologist, so I've worked with um, Dr. Sharath Krishna, because now that we have a true ecologist on staff, I'm a plant biologist, um, worked with him to study the land. So he goes out and uses the woods as a land lab. Um, I do as well with my plant class. Um, and it's great to take non-majors out there. I teach mostly majors classes, but with the non-majors, it's great to go out there, um, show them the woods, ask them questions about the woods. Um, so as a value, as a land lab, it's immeasurable to have something real close by where you can just go out, pick up a few plants, come back in, do some research on them as well. It's great. What we're doing now, though, is we're going back, taking all the plants that we identified, and we're looking at medicinal properties of these plants. The Native Americans, obviously, their original medicines were from plants, as you might find in the woods. 
So we've done a survey of, we're close to 80 plants now, that we've looked at antimicrobial properties in the plants. We've developed a quick survey method of looking at the leaves only, and I've had several students involved with that research. And hopefully in the near future we'll be able to publish that. So, and we have found several plant species that do have medicinal properties against um, bacteria that commonly cause infections in humans, such as staph, E. coli, things like that. So well, we found that exciting. Today, the Tawawa Woods serves as both a place of beauty and a laboratory for research and discovery, providing not only the opportunity to enjoy nature, but to explore human and natural history and better understand land management and stewardship. The podcasts are a project of Central State University archivist Sheila Darrell and English professor Amy Hobbs Harris and funded by the Central State University Office of the President and Office of Sponsored Programs and Research. Research on the Tawawa Woods was contributed by Cadence Lowell, professor of biology. Visit the university website at centralstate.edu.